Hello, everyone, and welcome to Live Code in the Native Snake. Everything I'm going to show is already on GitHub. You can see slides and code and everything. I also send a tweet with the link so where you can use kotlinconf18 hashtag to find it. So for, for the last couple of years, I've been programming mostly in Kotlin. So this was created from like a Kotlin developer for Kotlin developers. But I showed some like friends who don't know Kotlin, and it was fine. So if you're not an expert in Kotlin, you should be just fine. Right. So I felt like I need to talk a little bit before typing code. So here's a lightning talk about what is Kotlin native, right? So just like Kotlin, it's an open source project, which is on GitHub of Azure 2 license. It's developed mostly by JetBrains. It's about like 10 people working in it. It's written in Kotlin and C++. It's not released yet, and the latest version is actually, I think, a 3. But it's not released, so, it, like, if so, so not everything is perfect, and if something is not working, probably it's not exactly fair to complain, right? So. This is the definition from the GitHub page. So Kotlin, LLVM is a, Kotlin Native is an LLVM backend for the Kotlin compiler runtime implementation native code generation facility. It's a bit mouthful. <laughs> Not everyone might understand this, so I'll just explain a little bit. So what, it, what does it mean to be backend for the Kotlin compiler? So the way compilers work, you get a source code file like this Kotlin source code. Then compiler transforms it into another language with the intermediate representation. Here it looks like a file. It might not be a file. And then after this, it transforms, let's say, it's in a, from intermediate representation for Kotlin into Java bytecode. So the first step is compiler front end. The second step is back end. So this is front end. This is back end, the standard terminology for compilers. So for Kotlin, there, are, there is one front end and several back ends. There is back end for JavaScript. And there is backend for native, which produces standalone binaries without virtual machine or anything. So this is what it means to be like. What, this is what it means that Kotlin native is backend, right? Then there is LLVM. There are a couple of fun things about LLVM. It like says VM, but it's not virtual machine. It looks like an acronym, but it's not an acronym. So this is the logo for LLVM, and this is like the website. As you can see by the amount of CSS, this is not a JavaScript framework. <laughs> Uh, so LLVM is like at the same level as GCC. Maybe not many people know about it, but lots of software built using it. So if you use iOS or MacBooks, so probably most binaries created through LLVM, which is like a bunch of tools for creating compilers. Um, yeah. So in terms of Kotlin, what it means? So this is like the previous image where Kotlin native is backend, right? But if you like, expand it a little bit, in reality, this is what's going on. So Kotlin native takes Kotlin intermediate representation, transforms it into LLVM intermediate representation. And then the last step is done by LLVM. So Kotlin native basically leverages the whole infrastructure of LLVM and so on. So LLVM used by all these languages. So it's like a good company to be in, including like hipster languages like Rust right? and GraalVM as well. So, what is runtime implementation? So in Kotlin, you can have Kotlin.string, which is, becomes Java Lang string, similar for JavaScript. For Kotlin native, it's case string. And there are more classes like this standard platform. This is what it means to have runtime for Kotlin native. It also has reference counting, like form of GC and native specific code. So hopefully now this definition like, is a bit more understandable and more clear. So there's an obvious question, why would you do this, right? And this is my personal list, right? The number one is performance. And performance not necessarily in the sense that native is always faster. It's just that native has different performance characteristics, like lower memory footprint, uh, faster startup time, and so on. So if you thought that virtual machines are always slower, watch this um, talk by Martin Thompson. Um, he explains why virtual machines have some advantages over native. But still, na native is different. Right? Then there is C APIs. I think J Java community in general kind of lives in a golden cage when like, we never create bindings to access say, Java uh, C libraries or access Java from other languages. Like, in other languages, it's more common to have C API. Right? And maybe with the Kotlin native, it will change the culture of Kotlin community. There will be more C APIs. There are a few things you can do with native code. So interrupt between languages is one interesting thing. Right, and then there is like Kotlin itself, I think, is a good uh, reason to use Kotlin native because even like compared to more modern languages like Rust, Kotlin is way simpler, more straightforward, and like for, I guess especially for this audience, if you know Kotlin, you pretty much know Kotlin native, like 80% of it. So this is the end of the lightning talk. So now moving on to live coding. 
uh, the reason for live coding is that it's like the second best thing after typing the code yourself, like watching the live coding. So what I will do, a uh, snake game, that's a classic game, and hopefully everyone's familiar, it's like a snake in 2D space, it moves around, eats apples, grows, if snake bites itself or it touches the border, it's like dice, right? And I'll use, for UI, use mcurses, which is um, a library for terminal, which represents everything as like as a 2D grid, pretty much, like 2D granular. So one disclaimer, very few unit tests to save time, and because I know what I'm gonna type anyway, right? And this is a happy path. If you check out source code with latest like C line or IntelliJs we heard this morning, then it might not work out of the box, probably. So right now moving on to actual code. So here is C line in presentation mode. I can see the panel. And this is Hello World in C line. So just to show how it can run, there is Conan. So if I want to compile from command line. I can run Conan C, which is the name of Conan compiler. So if I compile it, so it, can, it takes a while, as you can see one thing. And then you can see this getpid function. It comes from import platform POSIX getpid. So basically, this prints hello world from pid and pid of the current process. So here it created program kex. If I run it multiple times, get different process ID. Also, I can see the size of the program. It's like 700 kilobyte. And it's like runs with one thread, so no, no virtual machine there. Um, so the, the reason we have it is here is basically Kotlin native comes pre with pre-generated bindings and on OSX and like other platforms, POSIX is already available, so I don't even need to do anything. Bindings already there, just pretty much call the function. I can also run it from IDE, so I can run it a few times, so it's different PID every time. And also, if I open main page for get PID, you can see it comes from UniSTD, it also get PID void, so it takes no arguments and returns type PID T. So here I can do like extract PID, specify type, and you can see like this is Kotlin actual type and it just matches definition in C header. I can click through this and like, at the end we go, then it's just Kotlin int really. So I can also like, get ID support here. I can like, click through into get PID. Takes me to the bindings generated. First, I don't see the source code here, but I can do select and project view, and it like jumps into here. So here, basically, is, if it was a normal Java project, you would see here Java libraries. Here, we see bindings generated for us, well, j just bindings. And then you can see there's also ExpoSX, some OpenGL, and um, a lot of like Apple frameworks, pretty much. So the way project is set up is like using Gradle. You can see classic Gradle, some URLs at the top. Then there is this plugin called Conan, and it's, we define a couple artifacts. This is like program snake, program snake test. It should be straightforward. This is deprecated way the way I'm using it, just because it was the way I managed to set everything up. And it's using CMake, and this is why CLine understands everything. So that's how things work here. So, oops. Wrong. So now moving on to actual snake. Right, so the way it will look, it will be a data class with some cells in 2D space. So we have val cells list, and here will be a cell. The data class cell with x and y coordinates. And it will also have a direction. And it will be just an enum with up, down, left, and right. So now we can create snake here. Let's say like this. So we'll have cells, which will be a list of cells. So by, by convention, the first cell will be snake's head. So here, like just for now, we'll have three. And so top, bottom, uh, top left corner is zero, zero. And this is like x, y coordinates, so it have direction going right. So I can extra introduce local variable. And then we want something like this to snake to move, pretty much. So I'll write a quick assertion here. So to do a snake move, and it should return a new snake, which moved one step right. So it will be plus one on x axis, pretty much. And direction is still right. So I'll create this function. It will be like a very functional interface. So it's like snake is immutable. Whenever it moves, it gives you a new instance. 
So yeah, so as you can see, this so equals it's imported from Kotlin.test. It looks a bit like JUnit, but obviously it's not JUnit. It's all native code, and then you have native. Um, you can see arguments, so it's like snake move, and then we have a copy of the snake. So I can run it from here, and like obviously the test fails because it didn't implement it. And this is like stack trace. Unfortunately, in Kotlin native, there is no mapping from stack trace to Kotlin source code lines. But you still kind of, kind of understand what's going on. So there is main function that we call. And then there is assert equals and the rest of the stack trace. But at least like this, uh, the error itself is kind of readable. So it says expected snake with cells 3, 0. But actual was that 2, 2, 0. So it didn't work. Right, so we need to implement this. And the way it will be done is just basically need to create a copy of it with cells, and cells will be a list of new head and plus new tail. I'll create these variables in a second. So the new head. A new head will be a copy of the first cell, so take first cell uh, and move it in, in the direction, which I'll do in a second. And then it will be new tail, and it will be all the cells except the last one. And so to move the first cell, Create this function and the function which moves in the direction. It's also like quite functional interface. It will be a new cell and it will have x plus direction dx y plus some shift in current direction. And direction will need also two more variables, so it will be val dx int val dy int. And so for up, it means no move horizontally, minus one vertically. Down is the opposite. Left is minus one, zero. Right is one, zero. So now if I run this, it should work. So, that the, so what we're doing here is basically creating a copy of the first cell, move it, and then drop the last one. So we don't really move all the cells. And the reason is that like, this way it's kind of simpler to do because snake can be curving in a complicated way. So that's like the way. So you can see now I ran it. It doesn't fail. All right. So it just print speed. So obviously, it's not the right way. So I'll move it into tests. So go into tests and create a normal class, say snake tests. And the test snake moves right. As you can see, I can use backticks and everything here. It's all good. So I can run now and there's a test. Might also want to import this. And so similar to previous, I showed this annotation, but it's not. It looks like JUnit, but it's actually not. So it comes from multi-platform implementation of Kotlin. So you can see, you kind of get ID integration as no normal code. Right, so this was the beginning. Didn't really need bid here. Now, like the next maybe smallest step would be just create use some UI with M cursors and M cursors it moves terminal into a different mode when you can treat it as a canvas. And for this, there is this function. And in it, SCI, it basically changes the mode of the terminal. And there is also this another function to put it back into normal mode, end win. So if I open man page for it, this is, you can see it's coming from curses.h, so it's all like C code. And it just, there is the description, but I, you can read about it online or in man files. So the next thing is just draw a box. And in curses, in end curses, there is this concept of a window. So I'll create a window between 20 by 10 here. So say height will be 10. There's no particular reason for this ratio. It's just like it's not proportional in terminal. So and there is function new win, which is takes number of lines and columns. So lines is height. This is width. And these are like uh, starting point. So this will be window. And then we need to delete window. Window. And then we can use this window to basically say, draw a box around this window. And these are default characters for drawing. Then in cursors, like needs this function to refresh to actually draw on the screen something. We might also do something like print on the screen things, right? So it will be let's say third line here, and this will be a representation of the snake. This thing like snake's head with its tongue. <laughs> and then can. We'll read a couple of characters just to be able to see what's going on on the screen. Otherwise, it will like quickly do all of this and go back into normal mode and like clean the screen. Right, so just to review what's going on, we initialize in cursor's mode, and then we create a new window of this height, and then like drawing a box, printing something on the screen, making sure it's drawn on the console, and then like reading a couple of characters. So if I run it from ID, 
it won't work, unfortunately. This is a problem with end cursors. It's not like Kotlin native issue. So to do this, I'll go do, do it run from command line. This is just normal terminal window. And there will be a snake fax. So if I run this now, so you can see snake printed. If I press 1, it prints it back. And there is also blinking cursor. To get rid of echo in it, there is no echo command, so it will disable this. And cursor set to kind of hide the cursor. 0 means nothing. So I press 2, and it goes back to normal terminal. So that's like the, the basic thing uh, to start the game. It looks kind of straightforward, but actually there are a few things going on. So just to illustrate it, I'll look at, well, let's look at this function, mw print, it just prints on a screen. So this is the man, man file, uh, man entry for this. Ignore the first argument, which is window. It's like you can see it takes x and y, which are ints, but these are like c ints, and here we have Kotlin ints. So apparently Kotlin int is just tr translated into native int. But then there is uh, the next thing is const char, and like th this const pointer to char. And obviously, this is Kotlin string. It's not a char. And the way Kotlin native represents it, and like unfortunately, like in Java, you cannot just jump to definition, but I have it like checked out on my computer. So this is the Kotlin native string definition uh, in Kotlin. And for example, if you look at hash code, it says like external, and that's the name. So Kotlin native string defined in both Kotlin and C++. So this is Kotlin side. It says external means like native in Java. So I can jump to also C++ side. This is how it's actually implemented in C++. And it's like details here, not that important. It's just that this is just not a, definitely not a C string. And so the reason it works is that because Kotlin generates bindings and so for MW print W. Uh, again, details not important. There is this argument which of type string, which takes Kotlin string, and here, down here, it transforms it into C string, gets a pointer to it, and so on. So it makes things nicer compared to, compared to other languages. So this is how this thing works. Right? Also, you can see there's bindings, and it was, it's, all coming from, oh, it's all coming from this package. OSX.star. And the reason it's happening is because Kotlin 18 comes with bindings for standard libraries, so it's platform libraries. And on OSX, you by default get actual binaries for end cursors, and you also get headers. And Kotlin native knows about it, so it's like comes with pre-compiled binding. For, it's not the case for Linux, it's like for some Linux, you will have to download end cursors and then generate bindings yourself. And to generate, you could do something like this, like here, I could go, and in the same grader, I could say, use interrupt tool, and it says there is library and cursors. We'll use them for this program and this program. And this is defined in ncurses dev file. And ncurses dev looks something like the super simplified version it has. This is the header that like, works for OSX, and this is how to link it. And after this, I will just get a package ncurses with everything from this header file. So basically, you can choose random header file, random binary, and generate bindings. So it's like quite easy. But I'm not going to do it here, because it's already available. So I'll do this. Uh, the next thing I do for the game to have some like game loop and to read input from users, so I'll create var input and with zero. Then the loop, say, while input to char not equals q for quit. Let's just do something like that. Right. Also need to clear here, because uh, we'll be doing it multiple times. So this is input. And then we want again a snake to draw it. So I'll copy here. And we want to update snake ah, somewhere here. And what we want just to move pretty much. And to kind of to make it actually move, we need to do snake head x. And I'll create just a member, which will be just the first cell. As you can see here, just, this is, looks like a list, like in Java, but in reality, there is no Java code here at all. This is list in Kotlin native. This is first in Kotlin native, so there is no Java collections anywhere around here. Um, so yeah, that's like the simple thing to me. So what's going to just read an input, then clearing the window, drawing boxes usual, and then th th this is for simplicity just for now, just to see that something happens. And then we just constantly update Snake with a new one. So might also import this. And if I run this now, so when I type something, snake keeps moving. It's not quite correct. See, that goes to the next line. But like, let's maybe just print it properly first, because it was a bit artificial. So like snake and say tail, and I'll create a member function, which will be cells 
uh, sublist. You can see also API is like inspired by Java, but there is no like Java at all. So and then for tail, you can do for each, for each, just normal for each, yeah, and do something like that. This will be eat y. This will be eat x. I'll take home. And this is the body of the snake, like this. And then you can do head and just use let here. So this, and this is snake's head. So, yeah. There is like one thing which I didn't do is that I had to type so that snake moves. So there is a way to do it in a better way. So you can use half delay function and cursors. What it means is up to 200 milliseconds it will wait. And then this get char function will just return zero. So this way, like snake will keep moving on its own. I don't think it was part of compilation, so it wasn't. I still type in myself. But you also see the snake is on the top row, which is incorrect. And the reason for this was that these width and heights, they were kind of for the game, but we used them for Windows, so probably should do something like this, just do plus two, because there is left and right border, right? And also, everywhere here, it should be plus one, because of the left and top corner. So, and that's like the, the thing, so. There are also like few things which I didn't mention which is going on because this is native. There is like you have to allocate and deallocate objects. Like best, but the best analogy for Java is like when you open a stream, you have to close it. So it's the same. If you created an object, you have to like delete it. The re then so in here, obviously, I just create snake. It like keeps creating everywhere. And the reason it works for like Kotlin native objects is that uh, there is reference counting in Kotlin native like plans to have pluggable GC, but basically Kotlin native takes care of Kotlin native objects. But it's not exactly the same thing for this window, for example, so specify type explicitly. I'll, I'll do this quick thing, making it not nullable, just to avoid the problem with nulls. So basically, you can see this is a C point, a point into some window object which is defined in Kotlin native. So from C point, you can also see that Kotlin native represents C type system in like mirrors it with its own types. But also like pointer, it means it's allocated something in memory. And we actually deallocated this with de del win at the bottom. But the problem is like if anything goes wrong here, like an exception is like a potential memory leak. So it's not like not the, not the best way to do it. And this like comes to the subject of how you do it in Kotlin native memory management. And there are like several ways. The most like classic way is just to use native memory. So you do like alloc and say time spec. Uh, just basically you allocate some structure and then you can get, get access to it. And here, time spec, if I jump to it, this is a like, class, but it's actually like, generated from mirrors struct in C. So this is how you allocate C memory. Uh, so I can allocate it again, and then it will be native heap, and then I can free this objects and like say raw pointer. So that's like the classic way. You have to pass objects around, you have to remember to allocate all of them. So it's like not the best way really. There is another way which is like, uh, using Rhinus, they're also known as like zone, uh, regional memory allocation. So this way you do it like a lock, and then you do time spec, then you kind of use it again, you can do it a few times, right? And then you can do arena clear, and it will deallocate all the objects allocated in this arena. The, the, the advantage is like you don't have to pass everything around, only arena, so that's easy. And the best way, if you can, you should do this, like memscoped, which is basically just a function which takes a lambda, right? And then you can allocate inside it what, what you want. And at the end of, uh, I forgot this thing. So, and at the end of the lambda, it will deallocate all these objects. There's a small twist to it is that for arena, you can do, func there's function defer, which means run this code in lambda uh, when arena is cleared. If you know go, there is a similar but it's actually keyboard. And code native is like nice, it's a function. And the same for memscoped. So you can use just defer to do it. And probably that's what we should do here because I cannot just like delete this window. I need to call specific function which does some other cleanup. So I'll delete all this code and just do memscoped here. So the whole function will be memscoped now. And I can do for window, I can do defer and basically copy this code into there. Ah, wrong. And the same thing we can do with end win, because we also need to kind of remember to go to back to normal terminal mode. So I'll do this. And 
So this is also good because you will never like forget. As soon as we moved into this mode on the next line, say don't forget to go back to normal mode. Also, as you can guess, the, they run in reverse order. So this first del win happen and then will be like go to end win. So that, that's a good thing. So I can create this new thing. So now Snake moves on its own. I didn't do anything. And it also delicates memory. Well, so maybe the, the next like, thing is just moves right. Maybe make it change direction, right? So it would be nice. So I'll cut this snake off. But back to test, just to write a quick test to see how it should work. And it will be, let's say, test called snake changes direction. And it will be function, which will look like turn. And let's say, like, turn snake down. So turn snake is moving right, and it turns down. So direction should change. And the cell should be 2, 1, so it goes down. That's like a simple case. There is another slightly more confusing case when snake moves right, but you tell it to turn left. And arguably, at least in this implementation, it will be like ignoring the command and basically just keep moving right. And this is because it's like the opposite direction. So it cannot just turn 180 degrees. So this would be new direction and return the snakes here. And the first condition, if new direction, new direction is opposite to direction, then do nothing. Right? Otherwise, basically just return a copy with direction updated. And the opposite is not surprisingly easy to write, so let's call it that. And it will be something like this. It will be dx plus that dx equals zero, and dy plus that dy equals zero. Then it's the opposite direction. Uh, for example, for up and down, like this x, 0 plus 0, 0 minus 1, plus 1, 0. So this is like the opposite direction. Um, so, yeah. So this should work. Then we, we actually want to use snake here, so probably we should a function like turn and read direction from user input. Something along these lines. Just wait to run the tests. I like see both tests working, so it should be fine. So I say turn direction to be some direction like this. And like when input converted is to char and do like when close. So for sh arrow, I, I use, I'll, I'll use i, j, k, l now. So i is up, j left, k down, l right. I could have used arrows, but it's just a little bit more complicated, so I'll skip it. It's like n cursor thing. This is left, and k down. L right. This is simulating errors on keyboard, like similar layout. And then there is default. I'll use null. It's like not the best maybe choice. So I'll make this nullable now. And now maybe basically null will mean do nothing. So that's that's the thing. Right. So what's going on here basically we do is when statement on direction and return return a direction, then t tell snake to turn in this direction. So if I run it now, I can change direction. Snake goes off screen, though, and comes back. <laughs> this is not necessarily what we want, so maybe it's like the next thing to do. So I'll make it slightly longer, like a couple more cells, say four and three. And before we like do it, I'll do like a bit of like cleanup. So create a data class for game itself. So the game will have val width and height, and it will have snake in, in it, and we'll use it instead of the snake itself, like here, var game, game, it will have with height, height and snake, <coughs> right, and we'll use it like instead here for height, with update snake in the game, and update game itself the game updates with direction. And just basically, I'll move this whole logic into here, so it like returns a copy of the game with updated snake. Right, so that's like one move, so now we have game. Then another thing is that this bit looks a bit like just drawing something, so I'll extract a function called draw, jump into it, convert it to extension function. So here, they're like the drawing of the game and so on. So what we want somewhere here, say, if game is over, do something on the screen, let's say, we'll print that the game is over in the first place, so it'll be 
in the case, game over. And another line like your score. And we'll just game score. You say like one, three. So it's like second line, fourth column. So the score is, I'll well, keep it super simple as well. It will be just the length of the snake, the cell size. And then the is over is also quite simple because there are two cases. One, a snake bites itself, so it makes the tail contains snake's head. That's one condition. And, and another, if like cells, if there is any cell is outside, let's say so like if x is less than zero, or x greater than width, or it y less than zero, or y greater than the height. So that's like another condition. And we also don't want to like game to continue, so it should stop updating if it's over. It will just do nothing. So that's the, the implementation. So again, we, when, we, when drawing the game, if it's over, just print the message. Also, over means uh, snake bites itself or reaches the edge of, this, of the game field, and then just don't update pretty much when it's done. So like, actually, it's relatively straightforward. So now it should like die. So if I go off the screen, I stop, your score is five. If I do and bite myself like this, this is fine. It's fine. So the, the next thing to do is probably apples. So I do data class for apples, which will be a bit like apples field. So it will have width of type int and height. It will also have cells to represent apples, but it will be a set. And by default, I'll make it an empty set. And there will be growth speed, which I'll exp uh, will be clear in, in a second. I'll make it three. Like a magic, and they'll be like random source of randomness, pretty much. And I'll use apples inside the game, like this. Apples, apples here, yeah. and we'll be the same width and height as the game. Load we can, and th then we want to use it somewhere here. In reality, it would be a case where where would you write one more unit test? But like, so what we want apples on each update to the game, it will grow, and grow will mean that if random next int of, let's say, 10 is less, uh, greater or equal than 3, then do nothing. So what it means is that it will be a number between like 0 and 9 inclusive, and roughly 2 out of 3 chances that nothing will happen. Right? So that's like speed 3. If speed is higher, more chances of something happening. And then here, we want to copy and basically just add cell at random location, so it will be plus cell, and it will be random next int width and random next int height. Obviously, we need to draw things uh, over here. So I'll draw apples before snake so that snakes is drawn over them. So it will look like this. Like not, uh, I wish I could have used like Unicode or like some emoji would be great. But it, like th this n cursor binary c can do only single byte characters, so this is why I say a dot. Maybe a bit boring. Um, so yeah. So now you can see like we had some dots on the screen, but Snake just goes through them. Right, so not working properly. Uh, maybe I also should do some cleanup, like make Snake immutable, inline it here, inline there. To this, put some new lines, add names, right? Um, yeah. So the next, like the last feature, is basically just to make snake eat apples. And the best place might be in the game when snake turns. Update, uh, change this to let's say snake turns, it moves, and then it will eat apples, which has grown, which have grown. And it will return new things like new snake and new apples. And this will be new, uh, new snake here. And new apples here. And I'll create this function, which will return a pair to, so that it can be deconstructed. Snake and apples. So in the first case, uh, not, not, well, the case when nothing happens, it means there's apples. And it's apples, cells don't contain cells, don't contain snake's head. So snake eats apples only with its head. 
and it'll be like nothing happens means we return a pair of this current snake and apples. Right. And in the other case, we need to return something new, and it will be, say, snake copy, and it will be new variable eaten apples. And we just increment it by one. So snake doesn't grow immediately. It just increments this variable, like eaten apples. I eat apples, type int, and it will by default zero. And the next thing you need to want to remove this apple from apple, so it's apples.copy. It will be apples, ah, uh, one cells. Cells minus snake head. And that's, that should be it for eating. But now we just update the variable we want uh, snake to actually grow at some point. And like move is the best place, so we can say if snake eats an apple zero, then we drop one at the end. Otherwise, we just don't drop anything. And this is how snake will grow. And there is the last bit to actually up decrement the apple. So we could do this. Then it will go into minus forever. So we can do max of, uh, max of zero and this de decrement. And th that should be it. So what, what's going on here when, you, when we eat? So snake can only eat apples with its head. And when, when it eats it, we increment this variable, eats an apples, which later on influences if, sna if we drop the last bit of the snake tail, then that should be it. Ah, missed. <laughs> so you can see it kind of grows, and I can play. This is not, to be fair, this is not a classic snake game because apples don't grow that fast, but it's bet better for testing and so on. So yeah, now it's over. Yeah, you can see this file is still like 1.3 megabytes, a single threaded. Um, yeah, so we shouldn't really look at it because this is pre-release. But this is the using Valgrind, this tool for native memory allocation. So this is how heap is allocated by native snakes. So horizontal is time, and vertically how much heap is allocated. So you see, it goes to like one megabyte and then like fluctuates around there. So just to give some idea of the performance, we shouldn't be looking at it. And an another interesting thing is that if I collapse all this code I've just written, in reality, all these classes, and that's like good and boring thing, I guess, for you, it's just normal Kotlin. There was like nothing very native about it. So the actual code is just there. So it can be reused. So I rewrote Snake using SDL libraries. Like better graphics pretty much. So it's like exactly the same snake code, just different UI, more complicated UI as well. But you, you can see like th the same stuff can be used for proper-ish proper looking games. So yeah, I'll die now, sorry. Um, yes, so th there is more stuff to Kotlin native. So that was like the live code. So there's more stuff which I didn't mention. So in the first place, C and objective C interop. There is like way more to it. And objective C interop. No, then there is concurrency. I guess you should go to another talk. And there is like other interesting things which added to objects, like you can freeze object subgraphs with this function. You can pin them in memory for Kotlin native objects so that you can pass a pointer to this object to see code. And there are like other annotations and so on. So there is more stuff to it. It's like what I show is like barely scratching the surface of what you can do. And then you get all the beautiful native things like memory leaks, segmentation faults. So some takeaways. Uh, if there was some continuum of user experience of using native, like normal C in programming language, and let's say higher level language like Kotlin for JVM, then uh, in my opinion, Kotlin native would go somewhere there. So it's much closer to normal Kotlin than to C. But it's definitely somewhere in between. This is not to scale, right? Uh, there is also like legitimate question, where would you put Rust, Scala native, and so on? And I think they should go somewhere on the left of Kotlin native, right? Not to scale, but you like, don't have to trust me. Well, y you can see I re-implemented exactly the same game I did just now in all these languages, so you can find it on GitHub, see yourself. And in my experience, there is more hassle, at least in interrupt with C is a bit more difficult. So you can also see all of this re-implemented in these languages. Notice Graal VM. If you never checked Graal, check it out. And also, like another takeaway, it's early days for Kotlin native. It's not released yet, right? So there are a few problems, like slow compilation, only C line app code, not true as of this morning. But still, like tools are not perfect yet. So 
quite a few examples uh, from Kotlin native. If you open them, they might not get ID support. So, like, you know, be ready for this. And so, what can you do next, realistic? So, because Kotlin native, oh, there, there is a GitHub project and it has lots of examples. They don't fit on the screen. So, I would recommend to check them out, see how they work. There is like OpenGL, uh, TensorFlow, and so on. So, check them out. There is also on kotlinlang.org, there is a reference. There are like references, basically, these files from markdown files from github page right and then there is also tutorials so ch check this out they're actually really well written and there is obviously kotlin slack people are friendly i think like the whole kotlin native team is probably there right and overall i kind of enjoyed doing kotlin native it was kind of interesting so i hope like it becomes good competitor for for other native languages as well so good luck to kotlin native team so this was the Live code in Kotlin Native Snake. Thanks for watching.